We're going to pull the cross up on, this, on these uh, screens today because I want you to understand the message is still the message of the cross. Can I take you there for just a moment? Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, God, stepped down off of his throne in heaven, stripped off of his royal, stripped off his royal robe, and put on humanity. Stepped down out of his place of supreme authority and out of the place of perfect peace to walk in this to walk in the earth where sin and destruction was abound. Lived out his life for the 33 years that he was here. Lived his life out being, being mocked and being abused and constantly being told he wasn't who he said he was. Jesus, the Son of God, was taken by a Roman soldier, laid over a whipping post. And that soldier took a whip, a whip woven with bone and glass and rock and slapped the back of Jesus with it. The first time he would put the whip and slap that whip across the back of Jesus, it would attach itself. You can imagine. See, Jesus wasn't whipped with a horse whip. He was whipped with a cat of nine tail. Specifically made and designed for crucifixion. Because it was meant to be a slaughter, not a death. He would take the whip, attach it to the back of Jesus and rip it loose. One stripe with a cat of nine tail would be more than any man in this room would ever want to experience. Not one. He would go across the second time. And a third time. And a fourth time, 39 times it was attached to the back of Jesus and the flesh of Jesus was ripped from his bones. And after they had beat him and beat him and beat him, he was forced to carry his cross he could no longer carry it and one of his followers would have to help him. They would walk Jesus up Golgotha's hill and once he would arrive they would lay the battered body of our Lord on a cross and nail his hands and his feet to it. Then they would place a crown of thorns in mockery on his head and shove, raise that cross and shove that cross down in a hole as the hands and the feet of our Lord would rip and tear. Biblical historians would tell us that in order for Jesus to breathe, he would have to lift himself on the nails. Jesus hanging there between two thieves. Watching men who had just abused him and 
basically slaughtered him. As his flesh is hanging on his back and nails driven in his hands and feet and blood flowing down his face and his mouth is parched and when he does ask for water they give him vinegar instead. But yet this is what makes the gospel powerful. In your Bible in Luke chapter 23 Jesus looks down at them the Lord God himself looks down when he could have said Father sin thousands of angels and get me out of here he went through what he went through looked at the very people who did it to him and said father forgive them for they know not what they do and a thief hanging next to him who never had time for him and never believed he was who he said he was and lived a life as a thief. And the last breaths of his body says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus in his grace and mercy says, today you will live with me in paradise. And our Lord Jesus states these words it is finished paid in full Jesus did it y'all and he did it for you <laughs> and he did it for me he did it for us he was slaughtered for me, wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. His name is Jesus. Who else would do that for us? Who else loves us like that? And you tell me, I'm going to be quiet about that? No, I need to tell you because Jesus loved you so much, he gave his life. He shed his blood for you. Today, in this Back to Church Sunday, I'm raising the banner of the cross of Jesus Christ high today. The cross, that's where we find him. The cross is where you find peace. You're suffering from anxiety today. You've been stressed out. You've been worried. You've been, listen, there's peace at the cross of Calvary. Are you, you need healing in your body? There's healing at the cross of Calvary. You know all the divide that we have going on in our society where people get, get hung up on, over where somebody was born and where somebody lives and what type of, you know, where the, what's, what, what house they lived in and if one has money or that or the color of somebody's skin. You know all of this division that we had that, that is really silly? You know where the common denominator is? The common denominator is the cross of Jesus Christ because at the foot of the cross there is no white. At the foot of the cross there is no black. At the foot of the cross there is no yellow. At the foot of the cross there is no red. There's neither bond nor free, Jew nor Greek, male nor female, but we are all one at the foot of the cross. It's the common denominator today brings us together it's the cross it's the cross father god with all of my heart today god be my witness if this would happen to be the last sermon gospel sermon that i ever gotten to preach lord let it be said that pastor bo turner raised high the banner of the cross of the lord jesus with the last breath in his body 
He shared Jesus with the people that were in the seats. Jesus that were watching him by Facebook and YouTube. He told them about the cross of Jesus Christ. I feel him in this room. I came to make some noise in this house today. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus. There's something about that name. Jesus, Lamb of God, Light of the world. Stand with me all over this room. I feel Jesus in this place today. This is not a a moment for us to go through the motions. This is not a moment for you to just respond, just to be responding. This is a moment when you make a decision about eternity. It's that moment. If you're here in this room and you can say this truthfully, say, Pastor, I'm saved and I know I'm saved. I don't have a doubt. I'm not lifting my hand just to be doing it. I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. Can I see your hand? That's awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you. But are you here today and you say, Pastor, I couldn't raise my hand. I got to be real. I couldn't raise my hand. I'm going to be honest. The Lord knows my heart anyway. I'm not where I need to be with God. Today, Pastor, would you pray for me? Because I don't want to walk out of this room not knowing Jesus. How many of you are going to be honest with yourself and be honest with God most importantly? How many of you will lift your hand and say, I'm just not sure. Pray for me, Pastor. Raise your hand. Raise it high. Raise it high. I see hands going up all through this here, all here, over there, over there, over there, over there, right here, right back over here. Hands are going up all around this room. I see you back there. Hands back there right here. I see you. 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 You know what's great? And you know what's awesome? Jesus loves you so much he gave his life. And he wanted to have fellowship with you so much that he made the plan of salvation very easy. He said, all I need you to do is believe in me. I just want you to believe in your heart. I want you to accept me in your heart. I want you to confess me with your mouth. And I want you to live your life for me. If you'll just give your life to me, I'll help you. Just say, You see, some of you say, Pastor, I can't come because I'm struggling with some kind of drug or I'm struggling with some kind of sin in my life. You know, you don't, you don't drop your sin and come to Jesus. You bring your sin to Jesus. He helps you with your sin. He's going to give you the grace to get you through it. You're gonna, he's going to deliver you from it. You don't have to clean up and come to God. You come to God just like you are. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. He wants you to come just like you are today. And if you raised your hand, if you're around this room and you raised your hand without waiting another moment, this is what the scripture said. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Don't be ashamed today. If you raised your hand, get out of your seat and come stand with me right here in the front. If you don't want to come by yourself, grab somebody to come with you. Come on, don't wait another second. You can't wait on somebody else. You can't wait. This is, a, this is an eternal decision. They're coming from all over this room today. Come fill the front of this room. Come on. Come from everywhere. Come on. Come on, Saint. Come on. Come from everywhere and accept, accept Jesus today. Except you, they're still coming. They're still coming. Some of you still need to think about it. Grab somebody. Bring them with you. Come on. Come on. Bring them with you. There's others. Come on. Are you still thinking? Come on. That's right. Come on. Maybe you need to invite somebody. Maybe you need to ask somebody. You want to go with me? I'll pray with you. I'll go with you if you want to go pray. Give people an invitation. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now's the time. This is the time. You don't want to be, you don't want to be caught unaware. Listen, church, Jesus is coming. And there's nothing's going to stop that he's coming. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be an awesome thing. Because you can go home to be with the Lord and live in paradise with him forever and ever in a place called heaven. 
come. There's others. Come. Come on. Come on. There's others. You're still thinking about it. I got time to wait on you. It's decision time. It's decision time today. Oh, I'll make that decision later on, Pastor. Just keep thinking about me because I'm young. I got plenty of time. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't wait. Don't do that to yourself. Now is the time. Today's the day of salvation. Right now, in this moment, in this moment, Jesus wants to be the Lord of your life. In this moment today, come. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. I want those of you that are standing back there, stretch your hands this way. From all over the room, stretch your hands this way. Stretch your hands this way. Because you know what we're all going to do? We're all going to pray this prayer together. We're going to ask Jesus into our hearts together. Because you know what all of us in this room are? Sinners. Sinners. Saved by grace. Every person under the sound of my voice, including myself, sinners. Saved by grace. So let's all pray together this prayer. It's easy. I want you to pray this with me. Jesus wants to be the Lord of your life. When you walk away from here, you won't have any doubt in your mind. According to Romans 10, 9 and 10, you can be saved. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father. I am a sinner, and I'm asking you to forgive me. Forgive me for every sin in my life. Cleanse me in your precious blood. Today, in front of this church, I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he was buried in a borrowed tomb and rose on the third day that he, Jesus Christ, defeated death, hell, and the grave. So therefore, this day, I accept eternal life through the person of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. In and through, in and through, in and through. Somebody celebrate. The angels in heaven rejoice over one that comes to repentance. Now everybody look at me. Everybody out here look at me. Everybody in this room look at me. This could be your son. This could be your daughter. This could be your father or your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your best friend. The ones that you love. This could be your loved one standing here today. Are you believing for the salvation of your family? Let me tell you how you can rush that up. Let me tell you how you can make that happen today. Find somebody in this altar. When they leave here, somebody, identify somebody and go up and hug their neck and let them know that you're praying for them.